there. Welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life and we started up with what we call regular cranberry harvest. That just means it starts the first Monday of October. And I had a couple requests in some of the past comments, people wondering like, what am I gonna feed these people when they're here? We have actually two house guests staying with us. We have Warren's uncle and my uncle, <laughs> both staying with us for the next couple of weeks. And depending on the day, if people bring lunches, if they don't bring lunches, sometimes I'm feeding uh, the people who come and help work here and other times they're feeding themselves. That is kind of the rundown here. Um, it is 10 after one right now. We really, really want to get outside. Well, Peter's outside working already, <laughs> but Joe and Joe was outside this morning working, but Maria and I really have not gotten outside yet today and we want to. The fall colors are perfect right now. So we want to go see that. And anyway, I always need to make some kind of food. Leftover over in the freezer was one of these boxes of pie crusts from when Emily and I did our freezer meal prep back that must have been in August, early August, I think it was. I just pulled those out and I'm making a pie. So this is five apples. I believe these are gala apples, five of them. And I brought up a bag of frozen rhubarb. I took a big handful, kind of, it, it's been thawing for a couple hours in the sink. I gave it a squeeze and then let some of the juice drip out of it and put the rhubarb in. And then I also sprinkled some cranberries on top. I'm going to sprinkle over some flour, sugar, a dash of salt, cinnamon, and then dot it with butter and get the top crust put on. Get this in the oven to bake at 425 degrees for about 50 minutes. Okay, we tried to run to the, okay, I'm spinning you guys in circles. We tried to run to the post office fast and there's just nothing fast about that. There's always somebody else there in line and anyway, it just took a little bit and the pie got a little dark. So there's our pie. It's kind of a bummer. It's a little dark. I think these little bits though, I can just kind of pick those off and you know what? Put some Cool Whip on top of it and I think it's still gonna be delicious. I guess next time I should listen to my mom. She's like, oh, don't let that pie burn if you run to the post office. I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. Well, look at that, mom, it wasn't fine. We're finally getting down here on the marsh. Like I said, it is our second day of regular harvest and let me just turn the camera. So this is a bed that Warren is working on. Um, I guess you could say he's harvesting it right now. He's actually raking the fruit off. And so the neat thing, you're not really gonna be able to see this right now because all the fruit is off already. There's a but ramp here. There's what? There's a ramp here. There is a ramp right here. Yes, you're right. I can see the I can see it here. So the cranberries have a little stem on them, and they also have little let me let me break one in half for you guys right now. Here, I can. And inside each cranberry there's four little air pockets, and that's what makes the cranberries float. So when he brings up the flood, then the fruit actually floats upright away from the plant. And he can, he comes through with the harrow and it presses the vines down. And as it presses the vines down, the fruit pops up and then the fruit gets plucked off and the fruit floats. So right now he has on what's called a raking flood. And this is just enough water to still be able to see the, the ground underneath, but enough to get the fruit to all float. Just a little bit earlier today, it was so incredibly sunny right before lunch, but then the clouds just moved in and now it's just a cloudy day. Although it's a great day for harvest. Sometimes if it's almost too sunny, the glare off the water just gets to be too much for your eyes. We're gonna be going down to rake trash here shortly so the kids grab the rakes. We're gonna have to find one more though, aren't we? Okay, nice, perfect. <laughs> this is 
a booming flood. It's deep, it's over the vines. Just a second ago when I showed you that other bed, you know, the vines were sticking out. But then when they want to boom the bed, which is how they get the fruit all the way to the other end, which they're getting close to being done with this bed, but um, when they're when they want to boom it all, they need the water to be up. Do you need help with the rakes? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll be there in just a second. But then they bring the water up so that the fruit floats free and clear of the vines. Looks like they need some help with the rakes. <laughs> Can you carry one rake, Joe? No. Yes. No. Hit. No. We're we'll do with the tree. No. 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 Here. Okay. You carry one rake. There you go. Nice. So everybody's just unloading all of the leaf trash uh, from the trailer onto a big. Basically, it's a compost heap, but I mean, we don't use it for compost. It's pretty acidic. The cranberry leaves are quite acidic. We just kind of let that naturally rot down, and it just, I guess, is a home for whatever animals and critters like to live in <laughs> the rotting down cranberry leaves. Oh. Do you need the trailer down here? Go, 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 go. Tell go. me when you're tired, and I'll take over. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. She's tired. <laughs> that was all you had, huh? <laughs> it is heavy, isn't it? So this is the bed that we've been taking fruit out of today. I caught a frog. It jumped out of my hand. Baby! <laughs> Right now, we have everything shut down. We're waiting on a trailer. Warren has to bring the semi with the trailer back from the receiving station, and as soon as he gets that back, then everything's gonna get up and running again. They're just kind of looking everything over. Usually they take time now to fuel up the pumps and everything. Come on, come on down. Okay. So this is the end for today. We ended up having to rake a whole lot of trash this afternoon. There was actually an accident with a, cra a big cranberry truck um, and there's two different bridges out <laughs> right now and so it took Warren extra long to get the load taken in today so by the time he got back it's already five o'clock and so we're done for the day and we'll we'll be back tomorrow. Well, good morning. It's the next day. I am just taking out a couple of these boneless, skinless turkey breasts here, and I'm going to get these thawing or um, defrosting in the microwave before we go out on our morning walk. It is a little chilly today, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Today it's overcast like it was yesterday afternoon, but it's definitely chillier mm -hmm. and a little bit breezier too than yeah. it was yesterday. So Sam and Ian, they just boomed. What are you doing? Pulling it up. Pulling it up? I suppose your leg is stronger, huh? What happened to your boot? So look at this. See how this is getting all... Where is it? It's only on this edge. Yeah. It's all cracked and stuff. Yeah. Right here, this black stuff peeled off. Yeah. And once it... Like this. Yep. See? I see. And now it's just wants to need to rip. So yep. the one day when I had this on, I stepped and it like sh tightened. Mm -hmm. and I just went, right down, so huh? And I I need, can't nope, I need a new pair of boots. Some new boots. They don't make boots the way they used to. That's what everybody says. <laughs> so this black, um, like corral or whatever, that's called a boom. Wherever the cranberries are, depending on like the wind, they just start on one end and they pull it all this direction. And this is the direction where they'll load the trucks from. So they're just getting it all ready. So it appears that they're finishing up with that bed down there and pretty quick they're gonna be loading everything up and bringing it down here. So now that the tops have died back on the acorn squash, I'm guessing that means that it's time to pick them. So I just picked this one here, and I'm gonna pick one more for supper tonight, because I thought if we're doing that turkey crock pot meal, that squash would be really good with that. The garden is definitely winding down, but I love all the morning glories still blooming. Aren't they pretty? And then over there by all the dill, the morning glories are coming up. They're just so pretty. I actually let this dill 
just dry like this because then it drops millions and millions of seeds and next year it'll all grow back up and I'm not even going to well I guess I probably will still plant some dill in the house just in case but this is all most of this just seeded from last year's dill but isn't that just a beautiful patch of morning glory I just love them so much so we still have some green beans out in the garden oh is that pretty Maria yeah, the green beans are kind of still producing, so I think we're going to go it's through and pick. It's beautiful because it's like the night sky, and then in the <laughs> middle, it looks actually, in real life, it looks like it's glowing. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's glowing. I think so, too. It looks just like it's glowing. You're right. Morning glories, because it makes the glow of the morning. I have a whole lot of green peppers that have already turned to red peppers, so I'm going to have to get those off. Oh boy, that's going to be another project. <laughs> okay, I'm back in the house because they were getting set to move everything, and I thought, well, we'll just go back out um, when they have everything moved to the next bed, and I will get my crockpot meal going. So those turkey breasts I had in the microwave defrosting, I put them in here. Now, I did have to cut one in half because they just, they're just a little icy, and it just didn't want to fit quite in the crock pot here and then over here I have one can of whole berry cranberry sauce a pouch of Lipton onion soup mix some salt some pepper and a half a cup of orange juice I'm gonna whisk this all together and then we're gonna pour it over top of the turkeys okay that's what it looks like I'm gonna put the cover on I have it on low and this is going to go until we are ready to eat supper tonight so it's 9 45 right now I actually I would like to have this done by five o'clock, and it says it should go for about six hours. <laughs> Quick, get to work, you're on camera. All right, the berry cleaner's been brought down to this end. So now it's just a matter of getting everything set up. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> We've got the boss pointing. That must mean there's things to do. Right now he's going to mark the ditch. To try to keep people from falling in. letting everybody know that where that stake is out there, if you go past that stake, it's up to your neck. I told Peter he couldn't have a candy bar unless he was actually working. Uncle Dan said he had 20 seconds in, so he decided to go get his, get on the chest waders, right? Yeah. At least make it look like you're working. One of the kids' favorite things to do is to come and watch for frogs that are sitting up on top of the cranberries and just... If you sit real carefully, you can watch them start hopping around. There's one there, and there's one out there. Actually, I think there might be three. Yeah, there's one close, one about four feet out, and one two feet past that. They say if you have a lot of frogs, it's a sign of a good, healthy ecosystem. you got to stop for a second and get, tell us something. Give us some words. Crops running pretty average this year. Nothing, uh, nothing huge, but we'll take what we get. Okay. And off he goes. <laughs> Thank you. 
We've got a new face around here today. Elijah's here. He's doing the probably the most most boring and mundane job there is, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> super important to next year's crop though. Super, super important. I've just been handing out candy bar, fruit strip. Thank you. You're welcome. Elijah's worked on other cranberry marshes before. Have you ever been on Trash Crew? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you start on a marsh, you're yeah, this is where you end up. Well, don't feel bad. And I was doing this the last few days. <laughs> sometimes we actually go right into trailers and then sometimes we just put piles. So if the trailers are being used already for the leaf trash at the cranberry cleaner, then we just put it in piles and someone will come by later in the day. If Elijah's lucky, it might be him. <laughs> Or sometimes we wait till the end to harvest too and then just pick them all up then. It really just depends on how many people are working and what four-wheelers and trailers we have available, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm back in the house now and I grabbed some of the cookies. These are some of those cookies that I made, I think that was Sunday, no, was it Saturday or Sunday that I made a whole bunch of cookies, four different recipes, put it all in the freezer, and I thought it'd be perfect for on these harvest days when I just need cookies right now. These are the ginger cookies. This recipe is in my cookbook if you're interested in that. There's, link, there's a link in the description box below. So I just popped some on this pan here. I'm gonna give them all just a quick little flatten like, whoops, there we go. They thaw just a little since they've been out. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of a flatten like that. Pop them, whoops, pop them in the oven for about 10 minutes. I also opened up canned chicken noodle soup and I put some green beans that we had left over from supper in it too. And we're just going to have chicken noodle soup and crackers for lunch today. And then I'll slice up some tomatoes and some apples as well. They we're serving up supper here tonight. And Did this is how, much? wow, Joe, that's turkey. Okay, that's probably enough. Everyone needs some, okay, Joe? This was on low for most of the day. I did turn it to warm at about, about 4.15. We're having acorn squash. Just picked those from the garden today, so looking forward to that. I can't wait. <laughs> and then we just have a box of stovetop stuffing, some oranges, one last cucumber we found in the garden, and then also a whole bunch of beans we just picked from the garden today too. We had to laugh because they're actually, the plants are blooming right now. And so are the lilacs. How do you grab that? We need to get a spoon for that, honey, okay? Well, good morning, everybody. I'm on day three of this vlog and we're gonna head down and check out what's happening on the marsh. I wanted to show you guys this here. So Uncle Dan brought us this weather stick. It's made out of a balsam branch and anyway, he knows all the details about it. The point of the whole thing is that depending on the type of weather, these branches here actually move. And at first it sounds like, oh, this is just some kind of joke, but it actually really moves. So right now we do have some impending rain they're calling for. And so the sticks are facing down, oh, but- right. Sunny, they actually go like this. They make a smile, don't they? Yeah. Like happy smile, happy weather. <laughs> and so it's pretty cool, especially in the morning when it's like a little bit more dewy and, um, yeah, I guess just dewy and more humid. The branches will be even further down than that. But we'll check it out later in the day and see what it's doing. Maybe it'll go even further down because we're supposed to get rain. This was as far as it went down. That was as far? All right. I'm pretty sure since I wanted to get out about an hour earlier, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they're probably moving to a new bed right now. That's my guess. Cause I don't hear, they were working on the triangle bed. It's not a triangle anymore. It's more of a, 
it's not even really a trapezoid anymore. Anyway, I don't hear any um, noise down here. Nope. So they finished up that bed. So the bed yesterday that you saw them setting up on, that was the bed that they were working on harvesting all day yesterday. And they finished it up this morning. And now we're going to the next beds. We call these next beds here the swimming hole beds because years ago before they were cranberry beds they were actually just kind of like a big sandy pit for a while and my our older kids so emily and nick and amber and maybe even sam got in on swimming down there but we just that was our swimming hole we rarely swam in the reservoir like we do now and they have forever been called the swimming hole beds because that's what they were and this would be super fun if you uh, grew up on an area grew up in an area well even in town there's different things that get named kind of funny names just because of something that happened there once or something like that anyway leave that in the comments below that'd be fun to to read through different names that things are called like for example and I don't really know how it got the name but we have Hell's Corner that's a spot everybody knows where Hell's Corner is on the marsh and it's just it's just the name right Maria you think that's where bad things happen? <laughs> so this is the first of the swimming hole beds and we have another one um, just to the north. I forget what I've explained and what I haven't explained, but anyway, we have a, this black boom out here. So Mark is just pulling in the fruit to create like pressure on the paddles over there and as the paddles grab the fruit then it takes it up the elevator it gets washed they bounce across the wet belt and then they go up the blue elevator up into the dump or not the dump trucks but up into the semi Sam just hollered to me that he saw Emily coming down the road, so she's coming out with the kids today. She wants to show Colt cranberry harvest. I don't think he remembers it last year. He was only three months old. So basically what happens is they have these uh, blowers on the front and they have a boom and they're trying, we call this the cleanup round because there's always some straggler cranberries that don't make it into the first booming and so we want to get every single berry um, up loaded into that semi. They just come through and they're working at blowing the cranberries out from the grass. And usually one side or the other has most of the fruit because the wind will have kind of blown it to one side. And I'm thinking today most of it's going to be on Sam's side. But we'll walk up here and see Ian's side here. And then we'll walk over to the other side too. So they have a lot to watch out for when they're booming a bed because you can see that metal bar that comes out that holds the boom. They have to make sure that they're not hitting the sprinkler heads. It's happened. <laughs> uh, it just makes more work then because then there's another welding project uh, for the spring. But anyway, so they have to watch carefully for the sprinkler heads. They're also watching for making sure that they're getting all the cranberries blown out of the grass. They're also paying attention that they don't hit a sprinkler head with the sprayer. And they also have to go straight and not start veering in. They wouldn't want to end up in the drink. And so they pretty much seesaw back and forth. So Sam will go ahead for a little bit and he'll stop and then Ian will go ahead and then Sam will go ahead. They kind of seesaw back and forth. This booming is faster than the first booming. So for the regular booming, you, know, you get as much fruit as you can, and that'll take you 45 minutes to an hour, roughly. Uh, but like for a cleanup booming, I did like the fruit, I had a lot of fruit on my side for this, and uh, just the way it worked, I was able to get most of it, and I'm blowing like a little berry here, here and there. So this one will take us maybe, be honest 15 20 minutes but on some of the bigger beds it'll take you a half hour so it's usually about half the time to a quarter of the time that it takes for a regular movie.
Well, since it is raining now <laughs> and the grandkids are here, we are not going to take another walk down on the marsh today. But I did want to give you guys another peek at the weather stick. Yeah, I think this morning it was fairly down as well, which was predicting that we were most likely going to be um, in for some, you know, not so pleasant weather. And yes, there it is right now. Still, still down and it's drizzly, definitely drizzly obviously very overcast and the temps are dropping too we have been super spoiled this october with just absolutely beautiful beautiful weather i mean in the 70s every day and even sometimes a little hotter this weekend it's supposed to be close to 80 again they're predicting so we'll see just just definitely getting spoiled so all right, well, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Just a good long peek at cranberry harvest and just kind of the ins and outs of the day here around my face. <laughs> I will have some more cranberry harvest videos from past years if you want to go take a look at those. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.